Hey guys, welcome back to another great episode of Bowhunter Die. Listen, before we dive into this episode, we've got a correction to make. Um, a correction. It's a correction. Now, this is a correction. I wouldn't call it a correction. This is absolutely the first, one of the first times that I have got Justin in the wrong. You know, last week's episode, Justin specifically went a record saying, You know that they're not coming in. They're not pawing these things up. Like they're not pawing these things up. Like Bucks don't make mock scrapes right now, and I totally well, disagree. That is accurate, because a buck can't make a mock scrape. He can only make a real scrape. Uh, okay, oh my gosh. I, you know, I can't, of course I gotta say something wrong and get in trouble, but the bottom line, we're talking about scrapes, I'm talking louder and over Justin right now, because, would you believe it, one of my hit listeners shows up in velvet, makes a scrape. I got I the still whole thing seen on the video. video. I, uh, apparently we're, oh, let's you're see. watching it right now. I'm not, not watching only, any of this. This is some great stuff. He comes out, he makes a scrape. This is good stuff. Take a look. Boom! Boom! <laughs> Dude, what are, you, what are you talking about? One scrape in the ground doesn't prove anything. Okay, define what make it. Do what he scrapes the ground, rubs his tarsal grant glands. Okay. Are you all I, on video? Are, are we you all running around in the woods in the summertime finding scrapes everywhere? Like, does it happen occasionally? I, Did I say it was an impossibility? Like, it could never possibly happen. Well, of course it could possibly happen. And of course it. You get, the, of all people, get the video of it, <laughs> yes. but, but let's face facts, dude. I've run trail cameras on enough scrapes all year long to know that this is, this is not a common thing. I disagree. I completely you disagree. disagree. I don't think they're making the size of the, the monster scrapes that we're used to seeing, but I absolutely do think bucks are regularly making those spots. And I what guarantee does that mean? It, well, by making those they're making, spots? They're, they're, they're starting, those, they're starting that mean? those scrapes up. What does that mean? They're, the scrapes pawing, are they're actively pawing the ground in the areas and that urinating come, in scrapes yes. during July. Yes, I do believe that 100%. This is my proof. Justin's one, wrong. One Let's move on to some other questions that came in. I got a question, Justin, that came in real quick that somebody wanted to know. This was from uh, Tyson Patrick. Wanted to know, he's been filming for a while. Okay. And he's finally in the market for getting a lane controller. I, honestly, I don't know how you film without having a lane controller. He says he's got it. He says he's got a sport air arm. He's got everything set up. But I tell you what, without a lane controller, dude, that's tough. Well, the thing is, it depends on if your camera will accept a lane controller. For those that don't know, it's a Good remote point. controller that plugs into your camera, allows you to turn the camera on and off. Generally, allows you to zoom in and out. Sometimes it'll allow you to focus yeah. if you're manually focusing. For me, it's a must-have for self-filming. Uh, self-filming without one, like if I forget it or I break one or something, is an absolute nightmare. But the, the key is, though, a lot of people ask us, what is the, the best camera to use to get into self-filming? And I generally tell them, like, if you're looking for the lowest dollar amount camera that you can get that actually will support a Link controller. It's right. L-A-N-C controller and uh, that's where you want to start but if your camera doesn't support it it gets a little difficult it's hard and speaking of this right now we're actually working on putting together a nice article right now it's gonna be going up on our site we've had uh, I, I think I got four or five of us now who kind of laid out our entire kind of filming backpacks what arms we're using link controllers cameras uh, Justin's the only one that was delinquent who did not get this finished yet but we've got that done. That's going to be going up on our website, so take a peek at that. That's cool. I'll because that will be really neat. I'm going to take the afternoon off and go home and do that. There so. you go. Dude, it took 10 minutes. You don't need the afternoon to do that. You put your kids my, in the bed and you My go. gear is all over the place. I don't even know where uh, half my stuff is right last now. Last and final question break. of the day here. Uh, this comes from Leighton Carr. Uh, should a person pee in a mock scrape? I see a lot of different opinions on this. I wanted to ask the experts. Now, this pee thing's great because we've got a little project that we came up with here that we've been putting together. We finally got it finished. I don't think we're going to air it here. You're going to sure. have to wait. I mean, it has to do with peeing, but not necessarily uh, peeing in a scrape. No, but it has to do with just peeing in general. So it's kind of interesting that this question came in. But sure. have you ever peed in a mock scrape? Yes or no? Call it out now. It's been a few years, but yeah. I don't, <laughs> do, it. I don't do it regularly. <laughs> do you remember what happened on my property with that one guy? 
I do remember that. That was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Todd had a trail camera up and the guy was peeing in a scrape. In my mock screen. And he didn't know that the camera was there. <laughs> Thankfully, the guy was facing away from the camera. Otherwise, it would have been really awkward the next time Todd ran into the neighbor. Uh, do, do, what about you? Do you pee in your scrapes? I have, one, yeah, 100% I have peed in my scrapes. Do you yes. do it regularly? Only when I have to go. Well, I know, but like <laughs> on a regular basis, are you peeing in no, your mock scrapes? No, not on a regular basis. But if I have to go and I'm right there in that situation, yes. Fair enough. I'm not sure, uh, to be honest with you, if it's better or not better. I think there's a lot of opinions out there. For me personally, I figure my pee smells like a human being's pee, and I got to imagine it's got to smell different than a deer's pee. I would imagine, right? I mean, I'm not in the practice of necessarily <laughs> comparing the two, but deer have fairly sensitive noses, so I, I'm assuming they can tell the difference. So I prefer to stick with deer pee or synthetic deer pee. In All right, there you have it. Layton, hopefully that answers your question. It probably Tyson, doesn't. Hopefully that answers your question as well. And with that being said, let's move on right now to get into some great non-hunting action. But it's all the stuff that's going <laughs> to no. prepare you for yes. that big buck. That's the point. Let's take a look. Well, it is, I would love to tell you that it is the middle of uh, October, end of October, and the rut is right around the corner, and it's bow season, but it's not even close. It is July 7th right now, and what we're doing is we're getting ready to do some scouting. Uh, we're out here on some public land. We're looking to run some game cameras. I want to spot check an area, and one of the areas I want to spot check is about a mile and a half uh, to the west. The reason I want to check it is they had it marked this spring and they were going to be coming in doing some select logging. I want to see what they're logging. I also want to run some game cameras, which is about three miles that way to the east. So I got one area that direction, one area that direction. Both are pretty much foot access only. So what we have is our four wheel drive, one horsepower, and we're going to be going in and checking it. A little tip for you guys. Um, you know, there's several different ways to skin a cat. There's several different ways to get way back in there on the public land. And today, again, we're using our four-wheel drives. In order to do that, we got to make sure we put on our proper safety equipment. Let's get them saddled up. Um, we're going to go back in and we're going to check some gear, uh, run some game cameras, and spot check some other areas. I do want to say that before you start saddling horses and riding them out on public land, as a side note, check to see with it either be the national uh, forest, state forest, county land, just check to make sure that you are able to run horses back on there um, or if they have to be on a marked trail. This area here we can, so we're going to take the four wheel drives back in and let's go check stuff out and see uh, what we got going on for this summer. Well, we just got in. This is the cutover I wanted to check out. Uh, it's about a mile in. The reason again for the horses is it gives us an opportunity to quick, easy way to ride in and enjoyable way to ride in. If you got horses, a mountain bike, uh, just little tips and tactics. Utilize what you got. You can get further back in away from my actual foot axis. Plus it's an enjoyable way to spend a Sunday morning here. But I want to check this cutover out and there are supposed to be logging in here. And it does not look like they've touched that logging yet. They've took out some of these select oaks, but have not cut out yet what I thought they were going to be cutting out. So we're going to keep riding further back in and see if maybe they took out a section uh, further in. Again, this stuff here, if the gate was open, you could drive it, but this is for uh, foot access only, um, non motorized vehicle, so it's gated, so you got to walk your way back in. So we'll go around and uh, keep checking stuff out. So as we're riding in, uh, one thing nice about dating a forester is you can pick her brain and figure out why these trees ain't cut. So as we're riding in, Sarah's telling me um, a lot with the paint markings on it. 
Um, well, there could be multiple reasons as to why this isn't logged off and we're, we're riding through the area that I was kind of hoping would be logged off already so I can kind of get a master plan going by fall. So it's one of those, hurry up and wait. We'll see when the logging company decides to log it. But it's nice. Uh, a lot easier than walking in when you can just ride a horse right back in here. Uh, this is an area I definitely want to get a game camera up in. Last year I had a nice buck on the game camera uh, that was chasing some does uh, during the rut. He come right down this an old grown up logging road. They like to the bed to the northeast here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put up a game camera. Um, it's nice because nobody is coming back in here. Um, it's going to be definitely over a two mile hike uh, by foot. But by horses it's a lot easier. So let's pop a game camera up. Uh, this is that old logging road um, I was sitting on last year and so I got the game camera set up on it same exact thing like I did last year I had a good buck uh, during the rut he came through uh, dogging some does I did uh, lay eyes on him during the rut but not a, ever close enough for a shot in order to catch on video so definitely wanted to put the camera up uh, see if he made her through the gun season and if he's back if he's running them same patterns What we kind of want to take away from today's show is have fun with it. We went out, we get into deer hunting for a reason. We deer hunt because it's fun. Don't get too caught up in being too serious. Uh, think outside of the box. On, these, on public land, you want to get away from other hunters. Start thinking mountain bikes. If you have access to horses, utilizing horses. We use them in the back country for hunting elk. Start thinking about using them for deer hunting. Maybe not so much to hunt with, but you can use them to get the uh, deer out or you can use it for like we did today, scouting. We covered a lot of area real quick on horseback and it saves it on our feet. So it's getting hot out here, bugs are bad. Let's get into some air conditioning. There's a fire in all of us. Anticipation leads to preparation and nobody knows how to prepare better than we do. Utility Division has the largest offering of ATV and UTV accessories on the planet. The end result is a fire we can all share. Never forget your water. Always have to have H2O when you're doing food plots in the heat. Anyway, guys, uh, welcome to Fulton County. Uh, afternoon of July the 11th. I just got home from work and I don't have much time. It seems like that is my life anymore. All I do is run, run, run and go to ball games and work. So I was able to get some clover mowed last weekend and tonight I'm going to try to get it sprayed. You know, it's important that after you mow your clover, you want to get back and spray it within a week because, well, mostly because when the grass starts growing, it's a lot easier to kill when it's growing good before it goes to head. So when you mow your clover and your grass comes raging back, that's when you want to spray it. So tonight I'm spraying it with cleanse. This is just a grass killer. Um, it'll only kill grass, will not kill any of your broad leaves. This is what Tyler and I spray a lot of. Um, it takes a couple weeks to get the grass dead, um, but it works really well, especially in conditions like this where it's hot and everything's growing fast. The other thing I'm going to do is spray this antler cane clover fuel. It's mostly a potash based soluble solution. It's fertilizer, right? So I'm going to mow and I'm going to spray the grass, which is going to knock it back but I'm also gonna fertilize my clover at the same time, which is gonna help it grow faster. So that's the plan for tonight. Um, it is safe to mix this stuff together. You always wanna check before you spray or mix types of sprays together because sometimes you can end up with a uh, chocolate milkshake looking mixture that won't go through your sprayer. So you always wanna double check everything and read the labels and make sure you're good to go. So anyway, with the cleanse, we just put in 16 ounces to the gallon or six, yeah, to the gallon, that would be a lot. We put in 16 ounces to 15 gallons of water. So I just use my little measuring cup, dump her in there, and put her in the sprayer. Sprayer's big enough to do three acres. So you wanna get her loaded up. Now the one plot I'm real concerned with tonight is the new plot that I just built back behind the house that you guys saw earlier. Um, I planted some rye, um, some wheat and some clover in there is like a cover crop 
um, which they took pretty good. But, you know, we knew the, the soil back there was crap. You know, it's probably really acidic from all the cedar trees and stuff that was in there to start with. Um, so the stuff, it, I got a decent stand, but it's not growing real well. So I'm going to try to get this back there and see what it does and then try to make a decision on what we're going to do for fall, whether we leave the clover in there or whether or not we uh, go back and kill it out with some Roundup and go back to oats and rye. Um, I'm thinking hopefully we can probably fix it with some fertilizer. Um, probably put this on it for now, and if it helps it take off a little bit, we'll go back and get a soil test and uh, get some stuff mixed in with it before spring. So that's the plan for this evening. I have two hours or an hour and a half, and we have to leave for Emerson's ball tournament. Um, just go, 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 go around here. I just can't believe how busy I've gotten since I've gotten older, but such is life. So right now, this is the mission. Right, guys, I'll jump off here and show you what we got. <clears throat> okay, as you can see, it filled in pretty good. Right there is going to be the tree stand. Oop, sorry, right there. Right up in there, we're going to put the lone wolves right there. Hopefully the deer work down this way to us. Um, as far as the food plot goes, you can look down here. We've got some clover coming. Now what I'd done is a couple weeks ago when I had the tractor out, I mowed a little bitty strip in and it was still a little wet, but I'd went ahead and mowed it and you can see that it did start working. There is a little bit of clover that come up. There's also grass right here. See all this grass that's coming down in there? That's what we're gonna take care of today. We're gonna buzz through here real quick, see if we can get it uh, sprayed, get this grass killed and hope this clover comes up so it saves us a little bit less work this fall. This clover's made to grow in the shade. Um, it's an antler cling variety for the shade. It should work well in here. It's just whether or not the soil is in good enough shape. So we're going to spray it and see if we can help it out. Something we're gonna look at right here real quick. Then we'll end the interview with this. We've had a ton of rain in the Midwest all spring. It's actually rained all summer until like the last week. This this usually isn't here. This is usually all corn. This is just a, a slight low spot coming out of the field, but with all these two, three, four inch rains we've had, when that water come ripping out of there, it just cut all the corn down. Now, as you can see, this goes quite a ways back up in here. Just keep on going. Look down there already. This is right here at the house. That's going to be happening everywhere all summer. This is going to create just natural funnels in and out of these cornfields for the deer. I mean, this thing goes way up in there. So when you're setting cameras, think about that. The deer are going to start getting out here in the corn. They're going to start eating the corn silks. This is just going to provide an awesome place to get pictures. Funnels galore in the corn this year with these ditches. The other thing it's going to do is provide you great access come fall. So if you have anywhere where you have a hard time getting in and out when it's standing corn, um, you know, go take a look at these low spots because it's going to let you access. I know one spot Frank and I will be hunting um, that's great when the corn's still standing, which is going to be around the Midwest a lot this year. Um, because the corn got in so late and that's out where we rattled in the big nine point from like 600 yards away It's been years and years and years ago when that happened But that I know from past history that that's a great spot um, Especially when we get standing corn out there and that corn is going to be in late because Tyler got it planted real late But there's lots of low spots around guys keep this in mind throughout the summer when you're putting cameras out Just something you normally don't have. Um, I just saw it when I was driving by um, Caught my brain. So wanted to share that with you until next time guys Bow hunter die.
Well, Brad and I didn't get enough food plot action in yesterday, so we came out here after work tonight. It's about 6 o'clock, end of July. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of tilling, and then we're going to get some clover in the ground. So uh, Brad's going to be out here hunting this fall with Tommy and myself. Hopefully he's got better luck out here than I've had the last couple of years. All I've managed to do is kill a couple of does. Um, but this is the farm where Tommy shot his buck not too far away. Uh, last year, we know there's some decent deer uh, on the property. Tommy's got some trail cameras out that he's been checking. So we're going to uh, get this thing dissed up tonight. We're going to spread two different types of Antler King clover uh, on here. I'll show you those when we get to the, the seeding part. But for the immediate time being, we got the little disc hooked up on the ATV. We're going to get everything closed up. Uh, and I'm going to start tearing this thing up as best as I can so we can get some seed in the ground. So let's do it. This works much better when you put it on right. All right, well, we've finally got our seed bed all prepped. You know, we went over it with the, uh, the Groundhog Max first. We got everything turned up. It actually did a really nice job. We're gonna change the name of this food plot from the main food plot to the junkyard. Because I don't know what happened in here before we started leasing this place, but I swear this is an old garbage dump. There's more garbage in here than I've ever seen. Old pop bottles and random pipe fittings and other plastic things. It's the weirdest, weirdest thing. But in any case, uh, Got the soil turned over. We went over it with the harrow with the tines down and we leveled everything out to give us that nice, flat, smooth seed bed. Uh, I measured this thing with my app uh, two years ago when we first put it in and it's just about a half an acre. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is we've got two different kinds of clover. We've got the Game Changer and we've also got the Trophy Clover. Now the Game Changer covers about a quarter of an acre. So we're gonna do half Game Changer, and we're gonna do half Trophy Clover. This also, or actually this one covers a half an acre. Right, so put these two together, I got three quarters of an acre of seed, but I've only got a half acre plot. So we're gonna use half this bag plus this full bag. Now, the difference between these two isn't so much the clovers in them, although there is a difference in the type of clover. The main difference is that the Game Changer has got rape seed in it, uh, whereas the Trophy Clover has got chicory in it. Uh, two different mixes, and the reason for the rape seed in this one is it acts kind of like a cover crop. So it's gonna come up really fast. Rape is a brassica. So it's gonna grow a lot faster than that clover is gonna grow. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna help provide some shade to that clover and help take some of the browse pressure off of the clover while the clover is young and trying to grow up. So that's the reason for the rape seed in this one. Same principle really with the chicory seed in this one, uh, but the difference is that you know you just got two different plants. Uh, in my experience, the deer love the chicory out here. We've got a couple almost pure chicory plots more on the north side of this farm and they just absolutely get hammered. So I'm excited to see what these two blends are gonna do in here. And then for good measure, we've got a little bit of honey hole left over from yesterday. Um, not much, but we got a little bit. So we're gonna spread some of that in here, see if we can't get a few uh, turnips and some additional rape growing in here as well. So primarily a clover, chicory, rape mix with a couple turnips mixed in there. And uh, that's what we're gonna do out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and combine these two together because these seeds are about the same size, or they are the same size. Uh, so I'm gonna combine these together. Probably gonna go ahead and just put this stuff in here as well. They're all very small, fine seeds. Uh, so we're gonna go real easy on the spreader when we walk through here, make sure we get good coverage everywhere. So we're gonna spread and then we're gonna harrow one more time with the tines up just to smooth it out one more time, give that good soil to seed contact. And then we're gonna get out of here. So yesterday we were putting plots in, I thought it was all cool. Bust out my pocket knife, cut the bags open. And then uh, Todd, who is the founder of Antler King told me, uh, hey man, they come with these nice little uh, handy notches in them so you don't need a knife. And they just tear open like that. How about that? It's amazing, modern technology. So in goes the game changer. All right, well, our clover plot is officially in the ground. You know, guys, this entire food plot, which is just over a half an acre, was done entirely with this ATV. Uh, just showing you guys, once again, you don't need big equipment. Hey, if you got a big tractor and you got a drill and you got a tiller and all that stuff, that's great because it's definitely a little bit easier on your body. And I know I'm not getting any younger out here, but this entire thing was done with an ATV. You know, Tommy and I went in together and we bought a pull-behind mower that we use. So we come and we, we mow trails, we mow our clover and our chicory plots, but we mowed all this down. We've got a sprayer that mounts on the back of this ATV uh, that we sprayed everything with to kill it. 
the Groundhog Max to till it, and then the Harrow uh, to drag it. And that's that's everything we need. And we didn't buy it all at once. This has been stuff that we've accumulated over the last three, four, five years. There was a point in time where we just used a backpack sprayer to come in. There was a point in time when we rented brush mowers, billy goats to come in here and mow everything down. Uh, so we kind of just picked, you know, one thing a year that we bought. We bought a disc, we bought a sprayer, we bought a mower. We bought the Harrow, I think two years ago I picked that up. So now that we've got all the equipment and we've got the ATV, guys, this is no fancy ATV by any means. This thing's, I think, 13 years old now. It's a 2006, uh, but it runs good and, and it gets the job done. So, you know, hopefully if we take care of this stuff, you know, this equipment will last us for years to come. We'll be able to continue putting in food plots just like this. So now we just need some rain for it to grow. But the last thing I wanted to, to mention to you guys and leave you with at the end of the night here is we've got some trophy clover left over. And if you look at it, this has got what they call their ultra coat orange, right? We'll show you a, a closer up view of this. So this is a coated seed. And the cool thing about that is this coating that's on here is actually a fertilizer or a food for the seed. So what happens is this stuff gets down on the ground. When you get that first rain, it washes that coating off, right? So now that seed is sitting in and around all that coating, which is immediate fertilizer for the minute that that seed begins to germinate. So it really helps with your germination and the success of your plots to have these, these coated seeds. Now, because they're orange, it makes them easy to see so I can walk through this plot and actually verify that I've got good coverage everywhere. So it kind of serves a dual purpose, but a really unique thing that I think not a lot of people realize what the coating on the seed is doing, helping your germination, helping you get better food plots. So at this point, we're done for today. We need it to rain. Once this clover comes out of the ground, we're gonna come back in here with the sprayer and we're gonna spray it most likely with clover fuel, uh, which is a foliar fertilizer. So you spray it on the plant once it's growing. It sucks in that food through the leaves of the plant, uh, through the stem of the plant, and it provides about 30 days of nutrition. Uh, so we're hoping to give this clover plot a real good, you know, kick in the butt before fall comes. So that's all we've got for today. Brad and I are gonna hop on the four-wheeler, take a tour around. The question we have is, what if the horse peed in the mock scrape? <laughs> That's Talked a great about human pee. Talk about I don't know. deer pee. I've seen cows horse and horses pee. pee, and I tell you what, I mean, it'd be like a swimming pool. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. It'd be it would wash your mock pools. scrape out. So maybe we don't want to do that. But maybe Josh could just find a little bit of horse pee, put it in the mock scrape. Let's see uh, what happens with that. You know what? Let's maybe just, we'll be on to something. Let's just focus we'll be the on next the next billionaires. Let's, Jeff Bezos, look out. Let's, yeah, right. <laughs> let's just focus on the fact. I, do, hey, listen. I, I, I just got back from camping. So horseback riding and camping on the ground, sleeping on the ground, I got to admit, those are two things that are off my list of future things to do because I've done both and I thought I was going to die on my horse the last time. But listen, I think if you do, I mean, what a neat situation. If you own horses and have the opportunity to go out there and hit public land, I mean, obviously you have to check to make sure that it's, you know, you're allowed to do that. I don't think sure. all places allow horses, but some are accessible by horses. How cool would that be able to be able to get further back, faster, not have the... The four wheelers making all that noise, kind of cool. And you get to wear a cool cowboy hat when you're doing it. So we have <laughs> co cowboy Fletch on the team. So hopefully he's able to, you know, get some deer on trail camera there. We got an update from Clinton, which was neat, just to see the progress of the food plot yeah. that he started way, way back in the spring. Like we're talking, like chopping trees down, yeah, one and the there first. was still snow on the ground type of thing. So, you know, here we are a few months later. Clover's gr growing. You know, it's not doing great, which he kind of figured it wasn't going to based on the soil health. Well, and the rain. I mean, this, this has not been ideal for clover. Well, they've had more rain down by them than Have we've they? had up by us, Oof. for sure. We've been super, super dry here. They've had a little bit more down there. Uh, I know I talked to Clinton the other day, and the, the grass is dead in, in his clover plots. The clover's doing all right, but he's still not 100% sold that he is going to leave them in clover for the fall. He may end up killing it and doing like an oats and rye or that uh, fall, winter, spring mix that okay. the Allen King makes. So he's not 100% sure yet. Got a little bit of time left to make that decision another couple of weeks. So, we'll, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll get an up, another update from Clinton there. And um, all I care about is the junkyard has been planted. And I did have an encounter with a buck in the junkyard. They can maybe show that little video clip. He was Tommy Boy. Yeah, Tommy Boy wasn't very cooperative, but he did come out. He didn't show himself. It was a good little, little he action that night. He limped around after I shot him in the leg, <laughs> and then he disappeared. We're pretty sure he got hit by a car last year. Yeah. So we found a deer with its head chopped off, and then he was no longer to be found. So he is uh, he is gone. But we got a couple other nice deer on that farm, 
and hopefully they'll show themselves this fall. And and maybe maybe Brad can shoot one of them. He just has to remember to hit record. That's all that matters. I told you to turn your phone off, too. I don't want your phone. That's not my phone. I, know, I don't even have my phone in here. <laughs> that ain't been my phone. I know better than to bring my phone in the my studio. My fault. Graph, bad, bad oh, studio oh. etiquette over here. So, guys, that's all the uh, action we've got for this week's episode. Next up. Oh, wait. Whoa. Oh, hold on. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Someone else watching this show saw what I saw, too. Dude, how about what happened to your pickup truck there? You got to remember to put the pin in, knucklehead. Who hooked up your trailer that morning? Brad. <laughs> Brad, way to go, Brad. Jeez, Brad. <laughs> Make sure we show this multiple times in slow motion for those of you who back did the, not catch ATV it during off the, the trailer, show. and I was like, what in the heck just happened? <laughs> I don't know. I, somehow we made it all the way there, and it stayed on. <laughs> just taking it off. Uh, you only do that in. once in your life. I did that once, and it put it right through the right yeah, through the tailgate. That wasn't smart. We no. won't do that again. Oh, yeah. Well, while we're on the uh, pick on Justin no, kick today. No, let's keep moving. Here. No, oh, we're going to go. Brad and Brandon thought it'd be a great idea to post videos all over social media with my dang flies open the whole time. Do you oh, see I that? Oh, I saw that too. We're on a Did roll today. This is like, let's just get it all out of our rip systems. Rip on Justin is going to be the name just of this one. Bring here. it on. I don't care. So there I am <laughs> I hanging from that. Todd's Gambrel thing like a moron with my fly <laughs> open. Trying to attract a new demographic to the show, but apparently it's not working. Yeah, that's so going to work. Now that it's out of our systems, we can move Let's on. Let's get the trophy photos. And get to the trophy photos. Jackson Jordan. Jay Massey. Joseph Hollerich. Josh Adkins. Lucas Howell. And Matt Pepin. Let's pick a winner. Who's the winner? I know who I thought was the winner. Who do you think is the winner? All right. I, I, I'm just, dude, I'm going to be honest here. I'm just going to let it rip. Jay, oh here we go. Jay, you got your leg sticking out. You got to tuck the leg, and you got to get that belly where it's not showing. Josh, man, you got this buck with this amazing rack. And all, all I see when I look at this rack is, is, a, is a fence post in the background. We got to think shadows. about these things. Lots of shadows. Got to shadows. And shadows. Matt, you're looking good, but you did it fast and furious. I can't see the body of the deer. Barely can see your bow. Yeah. Such a great deer. And just it's not, it's, not, it's not perfect quality. Lucas, not looking too bad. He's looking good. He's looking Propped good. Him up. He's got the bow. I like, I like what I'm seeing there. Needs a flash. Needs a flash. Not, not a bad. Smile. No smile. Joe. There's no bow. Ooh, yeah. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know where you got this deer from. There's no bow. Found it could it be dead. a rifle. Found it dead on the side of the road. Threw your camo on. I'm sorry. Got to see the bow. We got Jackson up here. Yeah. Uh, I see the belly. I might see a teeny weeny amount of guts, but man, big smile. Great background. The house might be identifiable, so we know where to go find that location. Uh, good we looking got the deer. Coordinates from I'm the giving picture. it to. Uh, I'm giving it to. I'm Jackson. giving it to Jackson. That's the winner of this week. He's got a killer handlebar Kings. mustache, too. All right, there you go. Congratulations, Jackson. Jackson. You're the winner. Send us your information. We will get you the Buck Bomb and HS Sent Away prize pack sent out your direction. And you're also going to get a scent oh, hammock as well, only because of the fact that Bucks do make scrapes oh, man. They're, in they're July. This, and because of his scrape, like crazy. you're getting one of those as well. They're so, definitely And scrape. I got the I'm proof gonna go find to a, prove them wrong. I'm going to go find a scrape line after work tonight. Just like last week, we're cutting Justin off. Until next week, guys, bow hunt or die. We're going to disc it up, and we're going to get some clover in the ground um, before it's, I guess, too late to do it, although we got a couple weeks off. So not really too late. Let's redo that. <laughs> Give us that nice, flat seat bed. Uh, <clears throat> seat bed? Seat bed.